Let's walk through how to create a CockroachDB serverless cluster, connect to it, and where to find basic cluster statistics. After creating an account with Cockroach Labs, click on Create Cluster and select Serverless to create a serverless cluster. The other available option, Dedicated, allows you to create a single tenant cluster with dedicated hardware and no shared resources, but it won't out of scale and you will need to plan the hardware configuration and topology for your cluster yourself. For a serverless, fully managed cluster, you can keep the default options and just click the Create Cluster button. Or you could customize your cluster a bit. To start with, you can choose the cloud provider for your cluster. You don't actually have to have an account with any of these providers. CockroachDB Serverless will manage all of it for you. You can also select a region where your cluster will be located. It's best to pick a region that's closest to where most of your users are to reduce latency. Regardless of which cloud provider and region you choose, CockroachDB will ensure that your cluster is highly available meaning that all data in your serverless cluster will be replicated three times and distributed across different availability zones, so that if one of them fails, you'll still retain access to your data. Finally, you can set a spend limit for your cluster. If you keep the spend limit at zero, you will get a cluster that is free forever, with a generous amount of storage and compute. If your application grows and you find yourself needing more resources, you'll be able to adjust the spend limit later. Most resource usage in CockroachDB Serverless is measured in request units, or RUs. RUs represent the compute and I.O. resources used by a query. All database operations cost a certain amount of RUs, depending on the workload. For example, a small read might cost two RUs, and a large read, such as a full table scan with indexes, could cost hundreds of RUs. Check out our docs for some examples and guidance on estimating request units. Once you've made your selections, you're ready to create a cluster. It should just take a few seconds. So now that the cluster is created, how do you use it? We'll be using the CockroachDB command line tool to work with a database. It has a built-in SQL shell that you can use to run SQL commands. But you can also use your favorite SQL shell, an IDE, or an ORM. You can download CockroachDB CLI tool from our docs. The first time you connect to the cluster, you need to create a new SQL user and generate a password. Make sure to save that password. You can have multiple SQL users accessing the databases in your cluster, in which case you'll be able to select a specific SQL user for the connection parameters in this dialog. Depending on the tool you use to work with the database, you might need either the full connection string or just the specific connection parameters. For CockroachDB SQL shell, select the general connection string option from the dropdown. If you're using an ORM, you might find the parameters only option more useful. CockroachDB Serverless creates a default database when the cluster is created, and that's what we're going to connect to. But if you have multiple databases in your cluster, this connection dialog will also let you choose a specific database to connect to. CockroachDB Serverless uses TLS encryption to secure your connection. So the first time you're connecting to the cluster from a new machine, you'll also need to download the cert file. Just run the provided command in your terminal. If you're using an ORM to connect your application to the cluster, you might want to take note of the path to the cert file, in case you need it later. You'll only need to download the cert file once. Once you selected the options and downloaded the cert file, you can get the full connection string. If it's the first time you connect to the cluster, your auto-generated password will be included in the string. But after that, you will have to input it yourself. The connection string contains information about the driver, in this case Postgres, because CockroachDB uses the Postgres wire protocol, the database user and password, host, port, the name of the database, and connection options. The name of the database and user reflect the options you chose in the dialog above. You'll use this connection string to connect to the databases in your cluster. If you use the CockroachDB CLI tool for that, run Cockroach SQL in the terminal with the URL parameter set to the connection string. This will give you access to the built-in SQL shell where you can create new databases and tables and read and write data. Once you start using your cluster, you'll be able to monitor its performance from the overview dashboard. Here you can see basic cluster statistics like throughput, latency, and the number of databases and tables. 
You can also monitor your storage and request unit usage patterns and change your spend limits. You can also identify frequently executed statements. Now it's time for you to create your first cluster.